Welcome to the program. Um, uh, let me go to Marie in Georgia. Uh, Marie, welcome to the program. Hi, Glenn. How are you? I, I'm well. For about an hour and a half ago, I was ranting and raving at you. Oh boy! And let me preface what I'm saying by you're only a month younger than my son. Okay. All right. So I feel kind of like I'm talking, having one of those face to faces that I rarely have with him now since he's a grown man. Right. All right. Okay, go ahead. But your first half hour, 45 minutes, I was so angry because you were so negative. And I'm screaming at my husband, bless his heart. (laughs) I'm screaming at him and saying, every negative thought that's coming out is a victory for the other side. So, Mm -hmm. Glenn, you sounded better after talking to Ann. But Mm -hmm. listen to the difference. I'm going down fighting, or Mm -hmm. I'm keeping up the fight. Do you see the small difference there? I'm going down fighting, Marie. No, I don't want you going down. I <laughs> yeah, want you well, to here's the thing, fighting. Marie. Here's the thing. Are you are you going to uh, Washington, D.C.? I would if I had the there money. You go. There you go. I'm going there down go. fighting, Marie. Mm-hmm. I'm going down but, fighting. If that is the but, attitude of uh, 300 million other Americans. Yeah. Uh, I mean, look, it's not. Know. It's really not that hard. Marie and I, I don't mean to get into your personal life or anything else. I know people don't have money to go. And I know. I know what life is like in America right now. But um, and and this is the problem. There are so many people. Everyone has a reason, and I had them last week. I had a bunch of them. I had a reason. I I am I am tired. Um, it it costs a fortune for me to fly and move the radio and the television show because we have to bring the cameras and the producers and everything else. It's not like I just get on a plane and go, and I've got to move the entire company with me to be able to do the radio and television show. So I had that reason. I don't want to go to Washington. I don't think this we is a good idea on a Wednesday. I, I've got a million reasons not to go. Yeah. But I'm going. And and as long as we um as long as all of us don't understand that um there's really very few of these fights left. You are um uh we are winning, but we are winning by the skin of our teeth. And, uh, you know, I had a um, uh, I had a very interesting conversation with a uh, one of the most positive people I know who said, Glenn, we're at the we're at the end game scenario here where we're, there's no, there's not a lot of runway left and we're at the end game scenario. I know that what people haven't told you, Marie, and I thank you for your call. What people haven't told you is what people told me when I first in 2008, if Universal health care passes, Glenn. We are fundamentally transformed, and I don't think we recover from that. Because you'll never, you'll start to see all the things you're seeing now. Doctors will start to um, quit. You know, one of the big things that we have going for us is our health care. That is one of our big growth industries. They said to me at the time, you gut that, and I don't think we make it. And you'll gut the capitalist system along with it. So now, as soon as it passed, everybody's like, well, it's not so bad. It's not so bad. I got news for you. We have passed thing after thing after thing after thing that is slowly gutting us. You get Common Core. If they continue with Common Core, I don't know how you survive. If they don't stop with the IRS, if we don't stop them with the IRS, I don't know how you survive. If if they don't care about the NSA spying on American citizens, I don't know how you survive. If you're going to let every illegal come in here, and while you're telling us that you have to spy on us because you don't know who the good guys and the bad guys are, but you're not going to uh, close the borders at all just to be able to keep the terrorists and the bad guys out, I don't know how you survive. If you put a guy in jail for wearing an NRA t-shirt to his high school class while you have a president running around the pool with an assault uh, uh, a squirt gun... The same exact kind of gun that would put somebody in handcuffs, your child, and they tell your child that you can't have a baked good that's shaped like a gun. You can't use your fingers that's shaped like a gun. And we all know those things are wrong. All of us know those things are wrong. But none of us are standing up in our schools and say, what the hell is wrong with you people? None of us are standing up and saying, I'm taking my kid out of this school right now. You know why? Because we're busy and we're tired. And I get it. I know. I know. 
I hear people tell me all the time, Len, you got to slow down. And then I hear people on the other side, what are you doing? What are you, what are you, you're, you're doing this and you should be doing that. Excuse me? Excuse me? Here's what I'm doing. I'm trying to fundamentally transform the media by, by putting on an internet uh, network that is going back onto cable because we did it that way so we could own it and we wouldn't have anybody screw with us. We wouldn't have any of these GOP people pressuring us. We wouldn't have a single pressure on us except for the pressure we put on ourselves. At the same time, we're building a broadcast network because I'm not sure that the radio broadcast network is going to have the balls to stand. And so I'm putting together a, a broadcast network for radio as well that you don't even know about. Then I'm trying to fundamentally transform the media by building a brand new uh, uh, Skywalker Industrial Light and Magic through the American Dream Labs, so we could have filmmakers actually go and make films, and they can be made of quality, and I'm trying to push the distribution uh, portion of it through, and I'm putting together stories and libraries, and I'm collecting all of the uh, history that I can possibly do. I'm trying to write fiction books, and you're telling me to slow down? On top of that, I'm also paying the ultimate price with my family. I have to tell you, I have the opposite problem that most Americans have. You have to work. I don't. I get hammered all the time because I'm a crazy. I'm just in it for money. I'm just in it for... I'm hemorrhaging money. All of the money that I have put away, I have spent all of the money that I have put away. Because I believe in something. And so do you. We're not different. We're not different than each other. We're in different places. Our country is at stake. We're not enemies of each other. We're actually winning. The president's poll numbers with the youth down in a month, 17%. Why? Don't trust anyone over 30. They see through it. They see. Finally, they see this guy is just as bad, if not worse, than the last guy. Everything he has said to us is a lie. But time is running out because they're also the progressives on the Republicans and the Democratic side. If we would spend less time arguing with each other on who's better, the Republicans or the Democrats, and we would start talking about the real issues, which is not conservative and liberal. It is constitutionalist or progressive. Maybe we wouldn't have had this problem. Maybe we wouldn't have this problem. Because we're not that far apart as people, but we have been used by the global corporations, by the media, by those in power, by those elites, by those who think they know better, by those who look at the American people like cattle. I am not a cow. I am not a sheep. I am not on your farm you are not my rancher. You are not, definitely not my shepherd. I do not answer to your voice. I only answer to one voice. The American people have been betrayed and have betrayed ourselves through our apathy and through our willingness to give other people the responsibility. I'm sorry, but the responsibility, I've been told a million times, you can't run faster than a man has strength. Well, God give me strength. 
and when I see somebody else step up to the plate, I will so gladly go away. When I see somebody else say, I'm going to do it, and they have the opportunity to do it and the means to do it, I will so gladly give it to them. I, you can have my effing company. You can have it. I don't care. Show up. I don't see anybody. I thought of this last week. Somebody said, about Martin Luther King. And they said, what about Martin Luther King's lifestyle? Because Martin Luther King, he was dicey with women and everything else. Yeah, he was. That shows you how desperate God gets sometimes. That shows you how weak we are sometimes. Because I know all the good guys, all the good guys we're probably saying, I don't want all that trouble. I don't want to give all this up. I don't want to, no, it'll cause too much. It'll cause too much of a hassle. It'll cause this. It'll cause that. And so he gets down to the list, and finally he's got to go to somebody who's a philanderer. Finally he's got to go to a guy who's an alcoholic. Finally he's got to go to somebody who doesn't know their ass from their elbow, but they'll stand up. Boy, you want to talk about making weak things strong. Here we are, gang. Don't tell me about how we've got to be positive. I understand we have to be positive, but we also have to be realists. Hey, let's be positive. Let's make sure that everybody knows that we're all going to make it. No, we're on the Titanic. Not all of us are going to make it. And unless you have some urgency, we're all going to die. How's that one? Play some music. Play some music once everybody's in the boats. Play some music. If you can play some music and help people get into the boats in a rational way, great. Play some music. But if you're playing some music just to make everybody like, relax, everything is good. It's not good. The boat's sinking. We're all in this together. We're all in this together. We really are. And we will make it as long as we have each other. As long as we don't tear each other apart. I am sorry for ranting. I, each of us do all that we can. I watched this great John Wayne movie last night. The family called Cowboys. I miss people like John Wayne. I miss people like my grandfather. They were standing around and they were bearing and they were burying one of the kids who died out on the prairie. And he said, well, I don't know what to say. But in the end, if you've done all that you can do, that's all there is. That's all you have to worry about. Don't do more than you can. You don't have to save the world, nor do I. But I have the opportunity to do the things that I have the opportunity to do. And so do you. And they're different. Just make sure you've done all that you can do. Because once we've done all that we can do, he'll fill in the rest. But it requires us to do everything in our power. It's our mess. Nobody else is going to come in and clean it up. 